Okay, what's up guys, welcome back to my channel. So I was actually thinking a lot about how I might do this tutorial. Should I go like a live stream or should I just post a video? And it was hard for me since I really guys want to give away everything that will help you to study anatomy and be good at it. So I kept thinking and eventually I got to something that I guess made a huge difference the moment I realized that I should change the way I study by not studying how to do a thing but knowing how to do it. It might seem the same but it's not. It is like learning how to learn something. I can tell you how to do it if you want to draw a cylinder I'll teach you how it looks like from a side view, up and down, and how you can draw it. If you're looking straight down on it, you're gonna see a circle. If they tilted the cylinder, the circle is going to be an ellipse. That is how you can do it. But how about asking the right questions? Why should I even learn to draw a cylinder? What is the use of it? I can draw an ellipse first then the rest of the cylinder. But why can I do the opposite? Why start that way and not the other way? Why should I use a cylinder for the neck? Why I can't use a box instead? I just don't want to learn how you do something. I want to learn to know how you do it. You might have the knowledge, which is how you do something, but you need the plan design skills, techniques, process, and the method to practically do something. You may still don't know what I'm talking about, but you will figure that out soon. And the moment you do, the game plan will change forever. So without any further ado, let's get started. Anatomy is so hard to digest and you may take forever to learn it. And you also may waste plenty of time asking the wrong questions. Going in circles on how to start, what should I start with and so on. So keep that in mind, I might not be able to answer all of your questions, but I'm pretty sure I can help you to ask the right ones and find the answer yourself. So in order to ask the right questions, we're gonna start with the basic one. What should I learn first? Should I learn the anatomy of the neck, chest, and shoulders, or what? And then you go watch a dozen of tutorials on how you can draw neck, and the second you start drawing, you will find yourself copying what you see. Drawing all these details without even knowing how they attach to each other, the relationship between all the muscles, and so on, and then you get frustrated by all of this information and then ask another one. But what about finding a way to make it easier to draw? And how that? Yeah, that would be by simplifying the shapes into basic shapes that I already know how they act in perspective. Cool, that is awesome, but how I know that I'm choosing the right shape to a specific part. And believe me, you can listen to all of us telling you the right shapes you can choose from, but I'll show you multiple ways using different shapes and you're still going to reach the same result. And that is what I was talking about. I can teach you how, but it's better to know how. Then you can decide which one is the best for you. I'll give you a simple example showing you how different artists chosen different methods but still reach the same result. As I said, you are the planner, designer and the executor. So just take a look.
there is something common with all of those methods, which is analyzing, observing, and then constructing. But some of these methods are based on some anatomy knowledge. Since I already know how the ribcage looks like, how muscles attach to it, how shoulders are attached to the chest and so on, but what about me, the beginner who never drew a human figure before? I'm gonna tell you how I did it. I seek the overall knowledge, the big picture, the big shapes. You mean like the skeleton? Yeah, that's what I mean. But man, all of those bones, I just can't. Okay, what about this? Oh my god, is it that easy? It is actually not. Remember, it is not about how, it is knowing how. So as you can see, this is how a skeleton looks like. And to construct it into basic shapes, for you and me to make it easier, you can use boxes or curved shapes, or whatever shapes will make it easy for you to start with. But again, the right questions to ask. Why these boxes are tilted that way? So the spine is actually a straight line? Also the neck? Not really. So what about now? Oh, so in order for the figure to be balanced, body parts need to work as a zigzag. That's why then these boxes were tilted. Now I know that the neck is actually tilted forward. So I can see that elapse. The ribcage is also tilted to the back. So now I also see the lower plane. The pelvis is tilted forward. So now I also can see the upper plane. Now things are actually coming together. Now I know how to start. I'll just draw a line for the neck, an egg shape or a box for the rib cage, and another box or a half sphere for the pelvis. Okay, what is next? I'm excited. Nothing, just remember, observing, analyzing, and then asking the right questions. I can't stress enough on this point. Cool, then I decided, I'll draw the neck first as a cylinder. But wait, I don't know, is it the right size? And how is it going to be attached to the rib cage? Is it even connected to it? And what are those muscles or tendons or whatever? Why even the parts I drew looks off? How am I gonna fix these? Why they seem smaller in some parts and bigger in, on other parts? Hmm... I think I need to observe even more and try to solve the problem which is proportions. Okay, wait, oh my god, the reference I'm using right now is almost symmetrical, so I can draw only half of it and then copy that to the other side. Oh, or even better, I will use the symmetry tool that will help a lot to accelerate the process and guarantee the accuracy. I'm so glad I kept observing, knowing the issue and fixing the problem. Now I'm gonna draw the neck as a cylinder, and it is now the right time to watch a video or read a book on how to draw a neck. So, are you going to learn every single part of it? All the muscles, names, and so on? It is actually your choice, but as an advice I should give, if you are a beginner, just don't bother yourself with lots of info. That will distract and confuse you. And let me show you how I started and teach you the know how I drew it. The first thing I did was watching some neck references to see what actually stood out more to me. Since my aim was to simplify the shapes to simple lines and curves, but still gives the right message, so there were these two big muscles. They seem like coming from under the jaw or behind the ears or below it. I just don't know. So I watched some videos and for sure the best ones are Broco. 
but it might get kinda confusing and hard to digest. So I just keep watching, taking some notes, but remember, the main reason for me was not to know everything. I just wanted to know what are those big muscles. So I know some, but still wanted to know more. The right questions. Where the neck starts, where it ends, how does it attach to other parts, the main parts, and finally, how to simplify all of these parts to get a believable look. So I answered all of these questions, like how the neck is attached to the head and rib cage, like this way, how those muscle shapes look like, also where they are attached to the head and also to the rib cage, which got me to the second question. It says the ends of those muscles are attached to what they call a manubrium and the clavicles. And then I know that I have to repeat the process again, which is observing, analyzing, and then ask the right questions. So I had to go back again to my books and videos. But before that again, I observed and asked so many questions that need to be answered. Like what are the clavicles? Is it like a single bone? Is it a straight line? What it looks like? Where it starts and where it ends? And this bone in particular was so important to study well, since I know later that the chest muscle and the deltoid, which is the shoulder, are actually attached to it, in a way. And the whole neck, clavicles, manubrium, and sternum remind me of a sword, as in the shape. So at this time, I really was enjoying every single information I get, and needed to know more. And I just ended up knowing that clavicles or the collarbone is actually looking like a bicycle handles. And it is not a straight line. And I thought I would divide it into three parts, like two parallel lines connected by a curve. I thought it was like straight line, then going up and then a straight line. But again, that's how useful it is to see any part from different angles. And it starts from the manubrium which has the ends of those big muscles on the neck, till it reaches the shoulder. And again, guys, after studying it till I got the grasp of it, I stopped again, because I ended up to a place I knew a few about, which is shoulders. And I got introduced to a whole new thing that changed again the whole game for me. I didn't think that is so important that it affects so much things quite a lot while drawing, which is overlapping. How muscles overlap each other. How they even wrap around bones. What is in front and what is behind. So what happens guys is we actually get introduced to new things step by step, one by one. Because if I ended up watching a whole playlist about anatomy, I won't be able to study and analyze the way I'm doing right now. I'll end up copying without even knowing how. Just having the knowledge does not mean I can apply that knowledge to draw. And then, while observing, I got stuck by something. It seems like there is a relationship between the deltoid and the chest. So which one should I study first? Or should I study them both? So I took a look at both and I actually could have started with any of them. But I found something interesting. That a part of the chest is attached to the humerus, which is the bone from the shoulder to the elbow. And the deltoid is actually above it. Or that's what I thought because it's not. 
So I said to myself, cool, I'll start with that large mass, which is the chest. But again, guys, I found that that large mass I'm talking about is attached from almost all the way around. So I got introduced to another bone called the sternum, which is a part of the chest or what they call the pectoralis major is attached to it. So I got introduced to another bone called the sternum, which is a part of the chest that we call pectoralis major, which is also attached to it and also attached across the cartilage of first sex or seven reps. And I felt like I will be so confused. So I decided again to put all of that in my mind, but I'll start with the deltoid, which should appear to me the simplest since I thought it is just one math. And again, I was wrong. And after studying from books and videos, I got introduced to some new parts like the scapula, which I knew later that the deltoid consists of three heads, anterior, acromial and the posterior which the last one is attached to a part of the scapula but this time i didn't bother myself too much since i was only trying to draw the front facing torso so i just learned the thing and just left it till i use it again or till i study the human figure back so guys same questions again how it looks like where it starts and where it ends. Is it attached to something? Does its shape change while moving? And how to simplify it while drawing? And see guys, this is the progressive way to study anatomy. It may not be suitable for some of you, but it is definitely suits the majority of those who want to learn faster but in order. So lastly guys, that is the way I study everything. This video was not meant to be a detailed anatomy guide, but to explain the know-how philosophy to study. In my terms, it starts with observation, asking questions, analyzing, taking some time to do it, finding ways to simplify it, and even Simplify the way you draw it by finding some landmarks that will help you, some lines, curves, or gestures to ease the process. You are the observer, planner, designer, and the executor, so you decide. Finally, I guess I will be going live to go even further and study with each other some parts, thinking together and even share the process with each other. So feel free to join our Discord. I will leave the link down below in the description. And thank you guys for watching.